one of the longest and deepest downturns in the history of the United States and the modern industrial economy lasted more than a decade, beginning in 1929 and ending during World War II in 1941. In this Liberty episode, we will uncover some of the tragic and heartbreaking facts about the Great Depression. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment on your favorite Liberty episodes. Throughout the 1920s, the U.S. economy expanded rapidly, and the nation's total wealth more than doubled between 1920 and 1929, a period dubbed the Roaring Twenties. The stock market, centered at the New York Stock Exchange on Wall Street in New York City, was the scene of reckless speculation, where everyone from millionaire tycoons to cooks and janitors poured their savings into stocks. The stock market reached its peak in August of 1929. The stock market crash that some had feared happened on October 24, 1929, as nervous investors began selling overpriced shares. A record number of shares were traded that day. After another wave of panic swept Wall Street, some 16 million shares were traded on October 29th. Millions of shares ended up worthless, and the investors who had borrowed money to buy them were wiped out completely. As consumer confidence vanished in the wake of the stock market crash, the downturn in spending and investment led factories and other businesses to slow down production and begin firing their employees. Wages and buying power went down for those who were lucky enough to remain employed. Many Americans forced to buy on credit fell into debt, and the number of foreclosures and repossessions climbed steadily. The global adherence to the gold standard, which joined countries around the world in fixed currency exchange, helped spread economic woes from the United States throughout the world, especially in Europe. Despite assurances from President Herbert Hoover and other leaders that the crisis would run its course, matters continued to get worse over the next three years. There were four million Americans who couldn't find work by 1930. In 1931, the number had risen to six million. The country's industrial production fell by half. In America's towns and cities, there were more and more bread lines, soup kitchens, and homeless people. Farmers were forced to leave their crops rotting in the fields because they couldn't afford to harvest them. High winds and dust from Texas to Nebraska killed people, livestock, and crops in the 1930s. The Dust Bowl inspired a mass migration of people from farmland to cities in search of work. In the fall of 1930, the first of four waves of banking panics began as large numbers of investors lost confidence in the solvency of their banks and demanded deposits in cash, forcing banks to liquidate loans in order to supplement their insufficient cash reserves on hand. Bank runs swept the United States again in the spring and fall of 1931 and the fall of 1932, and by early 1933, thousands of banks had closed their doors. In the face of this dire situation, Hoover's administration tried supporting failing banks and other institutions with government loans. The idea was that businesses would be able to hire back their employees if the banks lent them money. In 1932, however, with the country mired in the depths of the Great Depression and some 15 million people unemployed, Democrat Franklin D. Roosevelt won an overwhelming victory in the presidential election. By Inauguration Day, March 4, 1933, every U.S. state had ordered all remaining banks to close at the end of the fourth wave of banking panics, and the U.S. Treasury didn't have enough cash to pay all government workers. Nonetheless, FDR, as he was known, projected a calm energy and optimism, famously declaring, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Roosevelt took immediate action to address the country's economic woes, first announcing a four-day bank holiday during which all banks would close so that Congress could pass reform legislation and reopen those banks determined to be sound. 
he also began addressing the public directly over the radio in a series of talks. And these so-called fireside chats went a long way toward restoring public confidence. During Roosevelt's first 100 days in office, his administration passed legislation to create jobs and revive the economy. In addition, Roosevelt sought to reform the financial system, creating the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, to protect depositors' accounts and the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, to regulate the stock market and prevent abuses of the kind that led to the 1929 crash. With Roosevelt's decision to support Britain and France in the struggle against Germany and the other Axis powers, defense manufacturing geared up, producing more and more private sector jobs. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941 led to America's entry into World War II, and the nation's factories went back in full production mode. This expanding industrial production, as well as widespread conscription beginning in 1942, reduced the unemployment rate to below its pre-depression level. The United States turned its attention to the global conflict of World War II after the end of the Great Depression. Thank you for listening to Liberty. We hope you have truly enjoyed it and will hit the subscribe button, like, share, and comment to show your support and be sure to let us know what other future historical narratives you'd like to hear from us.